Hey guys, Alex here from Mr. Build It, and yes, I finally did it. A lot of you have been DMing me, asking me to make a video on a build that is simple and has limited amount of tools, and ta-da, there she is. Raised garbage that looks awesome and has its own built-in low-pressure watering system, so I don't have to stand here and start watering everything. So without wasting time, let me show how I did this, and you can do it yourself, and let's get into the video. Let's go. All right guys, so a few of you have made some suggestions that the next build that you do, it should be garden boxes. It's a perfect time of the year, it's summer. Well, I don't know enough gardening, so I would imagine spring would be the perfect, I don't know. Anywho, we're gonna build some garden boxes, specifically raised garden boxes. And you know us, we, we don't do anything basic, so we're gonna make sure it's nice and fancy. I have a general idea of how I wanna build them. I have the idea in my head. I don't usually plan anything on paper. It, I don't know, I don't have the time. I'm impatient that way. Uh, but I do know for sure, I want it to have cedar, because it's, Pretty good when it comes to weathering. I want it to have metal, just cause it's gonna look cool. <laughs> That's all I know, and the rest is in my head. So let's go get some wood, let's go. So I don't really have a green thumb when it comes to gardening. I'm kind of learning on the fly. Um, from some of the research that I've been doing, they're suggesting a few things to kind of, you know, save yourself any kind of headache. So some things to consider they're suggesting is number one is the location of your garden boxes. Um, you, you wanna kinda put it in a place where it's gonna get the majority of the sun and no shade. Like you don't wanna put it underneath a tree, which kinda makes sense. Secondly, they wanna suggest that you kinda consider the type of material you're gonna use just because raw wood tends to lead to, I don't know, rottening, but I don't want to use pressure treated just because I'm kind of nervous about the chemicals that they pressure treat the wood with. So I'm just gonna make sure we're gonna use regular wood, but not allow for it to be touching the ground as much as we can. And at the same time, we're gonna shishugi bond it, you know? Let it weatherize it. Oh, and lastly, uh, the weeds. You gotta consider the weeds. Uh, have a weed barrier at the bottom of the raised beds. Our previous house, the owner built them and they never laid it down and it was nightmare. Every season we had to spend an entire week trying to pull all the weeds out and then they grow back again. So that's a hard lesson learned. So weed barrier. All right, so we have our lumber, beautiful cedar. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep this project simple in terms of tools. I think I'm just gonna use like a circular saw and a drill, that way you guys can do it yourself. The goal on this project is gonna be to keep it beginner builder friendly. I think I'm gonna limit myself to like three tools, maybe two tools, a circular saw, an impact drill, and the rest of them are not really tools. I mean, I'll, we'll use a, our speed square and some tape and you know, but overall, we'll try to stick it to Two power tools, I think we can get that done. The way we're gonna start assembling this thing is we're gonna start cutting up all these pieces, creating two platforms, one for the top, one for the bottom, and securing them, obviously, with nice long three-inch screws. Once they're ready, we'll start working on the reinforcing or the risers, we'll call them that, risers. So, in the meantime, let's get building. In case you're seeing me use this uh, speed square, uh, the reason I'm using with my circular saw that is it allows me to create a nice straight 90 degree cut. So this is a part that goes on the edge of the wood, creating a nice straight line to follow. And then the guide on the circular saw just slides around it, all while at the same time not bogging the blade against the, the wood. It, one of the handiest tools when building without a big old nice miter saw. All right, if you made this far in the project, you're looking real good. Let's talk about the riser. They're gonna be cut and jointed together in this 90 degree angle. It's gonna give us stability. It's not gonna be swaying because of that. We're gonna cut these up to 23 inches plus an extra eight inches that's there. Yeah, it'll be plenty tall. So we're gonna cut up a few of those and start uh, creating risers. Battery died.
All right, so we got everything built. And now it's time to actually assemble this entire thing. Bottom, top, risers. We're gonna put these risers on these corners. And then from the inside, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> on the inside, we're gonna take um, these three inch screws that we're working with at an angle, we're gonna drive them in. Notice we're not doing wood glue because this stuff is gonna expand and contract with the seasons. And besides, we're gonna have a piece of metal inside this thing around. So that'll be the reinforcement parts. But these are the risers. So let's throw them on, yay. If this is your first time building this, congratulations, you've officially built like a partial table, like a like an upside down table. Probably not a very sturdy one, you know, securing like that, but nonetheless, you built a structure. Be proud of yourself. We're gonna we're gonna flip this thing over and we're gonna secure the other part of the frame um, down. That way you're not screwing up. It's just it just makes life easier. The last part is to do the top trim. Um, it's gonna be right in the middle. We're gonna create 45 degrees at an angle to kind of wrap it. Imagine like a picture frame. It just makes it so much nicer. You could, you could just do a butt joint, but listen, we're all about making things so much nicer. That being said, because all the screws are already hidden on the inside, we're gonna do the same. Well, this, this side's exposed. I don't know, debate. Do we secure them from the bottom up or just top bottom down? Bottom up. Just let's make it classy. Let's do it. All right guys, so we have our garden bed box uh, ready out here. Now cedar's the best material to use for anything outdoors. It just has a natural pigment that ages well. We're gonna do what's called shushugi bun, and you've seen it before many times. And what it is is through a uh, torch or flame, we burn the exterior core of it. And what that does is it creates this dense, callous kind of like feel on the exterior of the wood, the pores, and it clogs them, it occludes them, preventing any kind of moisture and rain getting absorbed and destroying the wood from the inside out. To get this accomplished, we're gonna use our friends from Burnzomatic. This is a Burnzomatic Matte Pro Gas. It burns a lot hotter than propane, though you could still get away with using propane. It's just take you a little bit longer. And the torch, I'm gonna use one of my favorite ones. This is the TS8000 torch. Why I like it, you can turn it on. Here's the flow, and then you can turn it on, decrease your flow, and then the best part, lock it in place. Once it's locked in place, you can control your burn even more and have a nice, consistent, controlled workflow that you wanna work with. So we're gonna take this and I kinda of get it to the point that we want it to look aesthetically. Um, and then on top of that, you have two options. You can either seal it with linseed oil, sometimes you can do it, it gives a little more of a contrasted cool feel, or you can leave it as be. So let's get to work. All right, so we got everything done. I don't know if you noticed, but I did the underneath side of it as it's sitting, uh, just to kind of give it the best scenario to survive the longest. We need to go to the hardware store, pick up two things. I need a brush to brush all this ash and soot off of this thing. So we have a nice finished product. It doesn't get your hands dirty, you know what I mean? And then on top of that, we're gonna need to pick up uh, probably two sheets of the steel siding or the aluminum siding, and then a roll of the weed tarp to put down. Oh, 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 oh. on top of that, we need to figure out like a, 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 a slow drip uh, sprinkler setup for this because I don't want to be out here and just watering it. I'm, I'm not doing that. So let's go get our stuff. All right, we got our sucker up here. Look how dirty this thing is. We're going to use a stiff brush, just brush up all the soot and all the ash off of it, exposing the new exterior. And then after that, we will give it a few coats of the boiled linseed oil. It's safe to do whatever you want on it. Um, we're just going to apply with a brush. Nothing fancy. You don't have to even do this, but I've done projects like that before. And I just like the extra step that it goes along with it. It just, it's going to look really nice. Um, um, so, in the meantime, take the cleaning. All 
All right, check out what I got. This is, I believe, 32 gauge. It's basically super thin. It's either siding or roofing. I don't remember. But anywho, it's in the lumber yard section uh, towards usually in the very end. Um, not bad at all price-wise. This eight foot long piece is, is it eight foot? Yeah, it is eight feet. Um, is like 15 bucks. I got two of them because we're crazy good mathematicians. That's $30. Don't worry about your calculators, I got this one. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is use my circular saw now. I had the blade I have on my... I was so close to cutting my leg. Ooh, so close. The blade that I have on my circular saw is a bimetal blade. So I can cut wood or I can actually cut... They usually call this like a demo blade. So cut studs with nails. Anywho, I'm gonna mark it out, cut it out, and I'm gonna line it all on the inside. And then I'm gonna take screws, like one inch screws, and secure it on the inside right over or under that little apron that's on top. So. This is where it's really going to come to life. I have a, a sprinkler right over there. We're gonna dig this up and then we're gonna move it about you here. And then here we're gonna have it raised up about 30 inches so we could sit in that garden bed. It's only like 82, no? Yeah, oh man, <laughs> I'm such a wuss. It's 82 degrees. I think shoveling and digging, I think that's what, that's what uh, I can't, I'm gonna have a heat shock. I don't know, anywho, I'm tired. <laughs> Gotta dig this up. All right, so let's talk about this low pressure system. Uh, this is a riser that just screws into the sprinkler that was there in place. Thread it on top and then a transition from a half inch to a three quarter inch. Now the reason why to a three quarter inch is because the low pressure drip system comes with this little kit. This is the part that screws in on top. There's a 90 degree elbow and then we take this half inch uh, poly pipe and then well, actually, it's five eighths. I guess it's the outside diameter. And it slides in place there. You run it along the side or the top of your garden, however you want it. Put your little drippers in place. And then you cap this on the other end. That way, obviously, it doesn't screw, oh, screw, screw. This one is shoot out. I'm sorry, guys. I don't like working in the sun too much. So with that being in mind, we are going to bring our garden bed over, put it on top, and then put cardboard. Now, it's interesting, interesting thing about cardboard is somebody said that that's a, a pretty good way to keep like a like a makeshift uh, weed barrier. So I'll try it and I'll let you guys know next year how it holds up. Oh geez, I totally forgot. We need to uh, put pavers. That way this thing doesn't start rotting away. I wanna get some pavers, let's go. Now we need our topsoil, let's go. So this is half a yard of topsoil. And now what he's doing there is he's filling up a quarter yard of compost. That way we can mix it in together and we'll have ourselves an excellent harvest season. All right, so our potting soil is in, everything is ready. Now we have to make sure our jet system that's gonna be watering everything is adequate. And what we're gonna go with is, this is a recommendation to me, these are adjustable full circle bubblers. They are adjustable between zero and 18 gallons per hour. And the way we're gonna work with these is, there's a little tiny, almost like a nipple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, and create a hole in that black poly tube. And this is just a sharpened screwdriver that I use to find studs in the wall if I don't trust my stud finder. And then we're just gonna put puncture it in, in place and then we have a little adjuster and this is, goes from zero to seven and uh, we're gonna spread them out evenly and then we'll fire this thing up and see how it's working. Let's do it. Okay, oh 
okay, 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 okay. Final reveal, let's see how she sprays. Ooh, she lives, oh, we got ourselves a garden, folks. Ooh, I'm gonna go relax now. Um, let me know in the comment section what things you guys should think I should plant in there. Never planted a garden. I want tomatoes for sure. Cucumbers, I heard they can be a little, you know, acidic or tarry, whatever. But anyway, in the description below, let me know the things that I absolutely have to plant that you guys highly recommend. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching all my videos. It means the world to me. Projects like this raised garden bed, they might look intimidating, but honestly, this is the perfect project to get into. A lot of you have DM'd me asking me, what are the good first time projects, simple projects, limited tool projects that I can get into? Guys, this is it. It required a circular saw and a drill, and we can knock this thing out. Courage and sweat, that's all of our projects. Take on the courage, the parts that look intimidating, projects that look hard, and then put in the sweat, the hard work to get through all the frustrating moments because we're gonna take lessons from this that applies to the next project we get into. And we're gonna be better builders and better people because life is full of obstacles and problems and it's all about how you overcome them, right? Make sure you check out all my links down in the description for all my social medias as well as my Patreon page where I release some of the behind the scenes stuff, some sneak peeks on the projects that I work on that you guys don't know yet about, including mini vlogs that are released walking through these projects about what I would have done differently. Little tips and bits of advice that, you know, hey, watch out for this and this is what I screwed up on. So hope you guys find value in that. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. Bye. There we go. We got a hole. They're gonna look nice and nice. Nice and nice. They're gonna look nice. It's just single nice. What's the worst you can have? Where's your house? Solving problems. That's what we're in the business for. Solving problems. <laughs> Shut up. Alright? We're just teaching people how to get started, and that is it. <laughs>